Urban air mobility is something we've been talking about for a fairly long time, it seems, and yet the physical representation of what they'll look like, well, it's been a bit uh, hit and miss, shall we say. One craft behind me, though, is certainly a hit. The Midnight from Arch, and to tell us more about it, I've got their founder, their CEO, Adam Goldstein. It's great to see you here in Paris. It's great to see this Archer Midnight behind us. Tell us a bit about the company, though, Archer. Yeah, so the company is based in Northern California, and we are building these electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to be used in urban air mobility. So these vehicles take off and land like helicopters and fly forward on a wing like an airplane, and they can go up to 100 miles. So we focus on what we call urban air mobility, so these trips that'll be less than 100 miles. Specifically, we'll target trips that are a little more in the 20 to 40 mile type of range. So think about trips that are in the um, urban city centers, uh, a trip like going to the airport to the urban city center um, or simply going from the city center out to one of the more suburban areas. A trip that might take you 60, 90 minutes on the ground in a car that you can fly in five or 10 minutes. And that's the point about the distance, isn't it? When you talk about these 20 kilometers, 20 miles, something like that, we think, well, that's not particularly far. But when you go as the crow flies, all of a sudden it opens up quite a bit of distance. Yeah, and the planes fly really fast. So we fly 150 miles per hour, which allows us to go really, really quickly. And because the planes take off and land vertically, it allows us to start and finish the trips near the points of destination. So there is um, little last mile um, commute as well. Absolutely. Now tell me a little bit about this midnight behind, because it looks like something out of a sci-fi film, like the, that Batman, I think, is the one that string, uh, springs to mind. But it's, it's a stunning looking creation. There are many here in Paris, but it really does get the juices flowing. Yeah, or maybe James Bond. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so the vehicle has um, 12 motors and 12 sets of propellers um, and can carry a pilot plus four passengers. And so we did want to put a lot of um, design into it uh, from an emotional standpoint. So most planes are built from a very mathematical standpoint because you want to make them as aerodynamic as possible. But we had an ability to totally redefine what aircraft look like. And so we decided to create a vehicle that had emotion, a vehicle that you want to touch, a vehicle that you want to ride in, a lot like how the automakers make cars today. It, it almost looks like an animal, doesn't it? In the way it's all uh, sort of ready to go, poised, ready to leap up into the sky. It's a fantastic looking creation. So what's the game plan then be between now and certification? So we are deep in the certification process right now with the FAA in the US. So a lot of the rules have been written and now we are going through the testing phase. So starting next year, we will have a fleet of what are called conforming aircraft doing the test for credit phase with the FAA. So every day we'll be doing lots of flights, building up to thousands of flights on a monthly and quarterly basis and going through all the checks points, proving that these vehicles are safe with the goal to start commercial operations in 2025. Which is very soon when we think about midway through 2023 already. Uh, what do you think that the, the, the world or the, uh, the business of UAM is going to be like in the next five, 10 years? Yeah. Well, one of the most interesting things that's happened in UAM took place just a week ago. And that was when the FAA's administrator, Billy Nolan, left the FAA and came into the eVTOL urban air mobility industry and joined Archer. So that was a huge step, just showing the conviction that the regulators even have in the industry. So I believe you will see these vehicles enter into market in 2025 and really start to scale up much quicker than people think. And because the vehicles are really cool, because they provide a really great experience, I think they'll be adopted quickly and the demand will become global. It's a fascinating time to, to witness what's going on with uh, eVTOL. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.